You can now get a 30-day trial to experience The Athletic for free. Visit the link in the description below to try it now. Back in 2014, a statistic did the rounds. Someone had clocked Gareth Bale running at 26.8 miles per hour when he scored his famous goal against Barcelona in the 2014 Copa del Rey final, which was apparently quicker than Usain Bolt managed when he set the 100m world record in 2009. Now, it didn't matter that the speed attributed to Bale was his top speed, and the one attributed to Bolt was his average speed, over 100 meters, because in true internet style, Bale was faster than Bolt. Now, it may have just been retweet fodder, but can you imagine how irritating it might have been for professional athletes to have their careers and dedication and essentially their life's work, without wishing to be dramatic about this, belittled in the name of content? So no, Gareth Bale is not quicker than Usain Bolt, nor is any other football player. So how quick actually are they? Undoubtedly, there are some very fast team sport players, but they are nowhere near the same or as fast as Usain Bolt, says Kelly Southerton, winner of three Olympic bronze medals in the heptathlon and the 4x400m relay. Jason Gardner, a gold medal winner at the 2004 Olympics in the 4x100m relay, agrees. When these players record those kind of speeds, they are amazing for a football player, but they don't compare to track athletes. So where are they on the scale? I reckon some of them would struggle to break 11 seconds, says Southerton, when asked to estimate how an exceptionally fast footballer like Kylian Mbappe or Erling Haaland or Alfonso Davies might fare. That's not a bad time at all. 11 seconds would be good enough to win a 100m gold medal, but all the way back in 1900. For present day comparison though, it would probably leave the footballer between 15 and 20 metres behind. I think they'd be pretty good to 30, 40 metres, says Southerton, but the difference is that the sprinters can maintain the speed for longer than the footballer, so you'd see the gap start to open from 50 metres out. Dina Asher-Smith could probably beat the world's fastest footballers over 100 metres. OK, so footballers aren't winning any medals at the Olympics, fine, but how fast are they really? Well, using data from Skill Corner, we can look at who the fastest players were in the Premier League in 2020-21. Skill Corner's PSV99 metric, PSV standing for Peak Sprint Velocity, is a good way of identifying these, as it captures the players who consistently produce high-speed output. By that metric, the top five fastest players in the league last season were Kyle Walker, Marcus Rashford, Callum Wilson, Adama Traore and Ben Godfrey. Usain Bolt's top speed, clocked between the 60 and 80 metre mark of that world record run at the 2009 World Championships, was 44.72 km per hour. Jonas Dodu, a sprint coach who's worked with Arsenal, Leicester, the FA and the WSL, adds a little bit more context. If you can run over 10.5, even 10.2 metres per second, you're in the top percentage of male football players, whereas that's the same number that we would use for elite female sprinters. Now, of course, that's not a criticism of football, as their skill set is different. Athletes sprint once, over 100 metres, and then they can have a rest. Footballers sprint many, many times a game, and very rarely for longer than around 30 metres. If they're lucky, they'll get a light jog as a breather before they have to do it again. The performance needs are very different, says Gardner. A football player needs to reach those speeds really quickly. Their training system is going to be very different because a sprinter is going in a straight line all at one speed, whereas footballers need the agility to move, sidestep, turn and go. Then they may need to repeat that speed. That's the key thing to remember, repeated high-speed sprints. And then of course there's lateral movement, and as basic as it sounds, stopping stopping frequently, suddenly, and to a complete halt without tearing or snapping something. Tony Clark is a sprint coach who's worked with Phil Foden and Connor Cody, among others. Footballers will have to sprint 10 yards and then totally decelerate, stop, and then turn around and go the other way. 100 meter runners don't have that. The skill and flexibility required to do that will naturally detract from the power that a 100 meter runner can concentrate on. And an illustration of this came a few years ago when Cristiano Ronaldo raced against a professional sprinter and Olympian, Angel David Rodriguez. There were two races, one in a straight line over 30 metres and another zigzagged over the same distance. Rodriguez won the former by 0.3 seconds. Ronaldo won the latter by just under half a second. And it was particularly interesting looking at Ronaldo's technique in the zigzag. He would almost jump into the turns two-footed, 
using the inside foot to break and the outside foot to push off into the next mini sprint. Whereas Rodriguez, used to straight lines or relatively gentle bends, used one foot to both stop and then push off. This tallies with something else that Clark mentions. If I was sprinting in a straight line for 10 yards and had to stop and then go totally left, I've got to use one foot to push off and I could be putting five times my body weight on that foot. Therefore, I have to look at the amount of load going through my quadriceps, my glutes and hamstrings. A footballer will need to work on different muscle groups using plyometric exercises. In other words, it's really not a fair comparison. Sprinters and footballers are different athletes who dedicate themselves to developing different skills and performing in completely different ways. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you do enjoy TIFO, then you'll probably also like The Athletic. If you watch our tactics videos, you should go and read Michael Cox. If you're into data, read Tom Warville. And if you're into transfers, it's David Ornstein. Plus, if you're a fan of any Premier League team, then there's a journalist dedicated to you, and you can try it for free for 30 days now by clicking the link in the description.